What's up guys, I am here to show you how to run my autopilot script, how to properly set up your ship. I am using the Easy Start Fighter because everyone knows what it looks like. And so this and the system's supposed to work on any ship. So if it can work on this, it can work on anything. First of all, let's get the programming block down and actually load the autopilot program. Edit, browse workshop, find the autopilot. Autopilot, here we go. And here it tells us everything we need. We need a gyroscope, three blocks, a GPS nav, the coordinates, and one or more thrusters named forward go. Let's set up the part that tells us the orientation. These three can be any sort of block you can name. I could have three remote controls. I could have three control panels if I you know, put some blocks up to mount them on. Right now, I'm just going to use a spotlight and two control panels. Spotlight, control panel, control panel. Now you're going to have three blocks. You're going to have GPS center, which in this case is the spotlight. You have GPS top, which goes on top of the center, and GPS left, which goes to the left of center. Let's name those properly. You are GPS top. GPS left and spotlight you are GPS center. Just turning this off so it doesn't glare at us the whole time. So with that configured, let's try running the script. It says, oh no. Caught exception, no coordinate block found. Now because this is this did throw an exception, we are going to have to recompile by going back, check code, remember an exit. So we've recompiled. So now we need to include what next? A gyroscope named Gyro Init. We want this to be facing forward. So it is facing forward when the circle is facing forward and it is face and the gyroscope is upright. See this circle facing forward and is upright. So this this would not work. This would not work. This does. So we have set that. We need to rename it. Stratoscope 3. Gyro knit. Now we need to make sure these overrides are set to zero. We can do that with right click. That will just set each of them to zero. Override controls on or off at this point. I would say off right now. Just so it doesn't fly away while you're setting it up. Gyroscope's in place. We do need to rename the other gyroscopes because of uh, improper parsing. I, I will fix this in a later version, but right now, no other gyro no other block can start with the letters G Y R O. So we could name this Gybro. We can name the other one Spinner. I usually use Spinner one, two, three, etc. But whatever, that'll be fixed eventually. You've got Gyro Knit. The other ones aren't named Gyro. What's left? We've got the coordinate block, which tells us exactly where we're going. So, cord, CRD, capital letters, open parentheses, and three or four numbers. Let's go to 400, 400, 400. Now, that as it is will tell the autopilot to go to 400, 400, 400. Now, if we want to be fancy, we can set a distance away that it will stop. So let's say we want to stop 100 meters away. We can set that. These can, t these can absolutely be negative numbers. If you set the distance away to negative, God have mercy on your soul, you'll be orbiting that spot forever. It might be funny to look at, but, but your ship will hate you forever. So corn is set up. And most importantly, we need the GPS nav block. This holds the direction we're facing. This holds how far it is away. So we name this GPS nav, colon. I like to show it on the HUD. It is not necessary to show it on the HUD. I just like to do that. Same with the coordinate. So that's ready to go. We need to name one of these forward, at least one of these forward thrusters, uh, forward go. Now, because there's only one large thruster on this, at, on this ship, I'm just going to name the large thruster forward go. We can name 
multiple thrusters forward go, but for the sake of example, just the large one. We can put forward go at the top, at the front of the thing, we could put it in the middle. So now that that's in place, let's run the script once just to make sure everything works. We've got no exceptions. GPS nav has been set to a to tell us the distance and the angle that we need to face. So that's all good. Things are all working. Now, you could just sit here and hammer the run button all day. But really, you're going to want to set up a timer. So let's plop a timer down. You're going to want to set the delay to one second. The setup actions, you're going to want to have three actions. One will be timer block start. You're going to want to, it, this timer block will start itself. Second action, you're going to want this timer block to trigger itself. Now, it might not make sense to have it start itself and trigger itself at the same time, but it works a lot better. And finally, you want it to run the script itself. If you've got multiple scripts, make sure it's running the autopilot. So all in all, that is all that needs to happen. Let's get in the cockpit. We are going to want to set a few things on our hotbar. The first one will be the timer block. We want to turn that on or off. Now, because it's triggering itself and starring itself, just hitting stop won't stop the timer block. We're going to want to completely turn it off. Second of all, we want to be able to start the timer block, so we can either do trigger now or start. I usually use trigger now. Both will work. Finally, we are going to want the gyroscopes. We are going to want to be able to override controls on or off. That is important because right now we are manually in control of the ship. The script isn't, isn't trying to control our ship at all because we are in control. Let's start this script. Let's start the timer. Timer is on and we are going. You can see the GPS nav is now updating in relatively real time. It's telling us to turn to the left and turn down. This is exactly what Wheatley script does, but it doesn't fly the ship itself. So if you wanted to just fly it in yourself, it would tell you which way to face and everything. But you want to autopilot. You want to tab out, go get a cup of coffee or something. So let's start that up now. Let's put the ship wherever you want to go. Uh, here and we turn the gyroscope override to on. The ship is now, the script is now in control of the gyro. You can see it is turning us towards the direction we want to go. In this case, 400, negative 400, 400. And once we are facing that relative direction, the thruster will turn on, like it just did there. So here we are, rocketing off. We've got 400 meters to go. It's going to be a relatively smooth flight. You see we've already arrived within 200 meters and we're stopping because of the inertial dampeners. If you leave inertial dampeners off, God have mercy on your soul. Now let's go back home. While the script is running, we can just change these numbers. Zero. 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 So here we are in another take. We are about ready to go home. Coordinate is set. GPS nav is telling us we need to go a bit left. Gyroscope override is off. So let's turn that on and get on our way. So we're headed home. But oh no, it looks like we are on a collision course. So quickly turn the gyroscope back to manual. That turns the forward thrust override off. So we are in complete control. Let's make some emergency maneuvers. And now that we're clear, we can turn the gyroscope back to override, be facing, and the script goes on just like nothing had happened. One more feature I want to mention is the ability to use a sound block. So let's get out and let's plop a sound block on here. Now we need to configure the sound block. In order to use the sound block, we need to enable it on arrive. So sound block, you get renamed to on arrive. We have to pick a sound from the list you and you detect it. I usually use objective complete. Set the range, set the volume, whatever. If you're using a looping one, set the loop. 
Really two minutes of alert and dial. Objective complete. So there we go. So one more time, we're going to see this in action. But this time, it is going to tell us that objective complete. Here we are, we've turned the gyro on, the gyro override on. We are turning to face, so we've got about 40 degrees left and 25 degrees down to turn. We're facing the right way now, so we're thrusting. Doesn't look like we're going to crash, so I'm not going to do any dodges. I misspoke. We were going way too fast. But in any event, it told us objective complete. It tells you that when you've reached the distance, not when you stop. So make sure you set enough distance that you can break in time. So that concludes my tutorial on how to use this. I hope you have an excellent time. I hope to see you somewhere in the stars, somewhere in your life, somewhere in the future. Good luck and happy exploring.